Okay, now basically, most rockets today, and pretty much for, forever, have been what's called a bi-propellant rocket. Bi for two, propellant for propellant. And this consists of a fuel, which is typically either kerosene or methane or hydrogen, um, and then an oxidizer, which is, for the most part, always liquid oxygen. So the fuel and the oxidizer travel through pumps that supply it to the combustion chamber of the rocket motor, where the two elements are mixed together and then ignited. And what's going on in the combustion chamber is, for the most part, it's just a controlled explosion. And as those hot gases escape through the throat and th into the nozzle, then you get your rocket thrust. But these rockets are very complex, and because you're dealing with a lot of heat, a lot of flame, there's a lot of risk for, you know, tragedy and, and explosions and whatnot. So I decided that I was going to go for a monopropellant rocket. And this now, in a monopropellant rocket, you have a single uh, fuel, a liquid, in this case, 90% pure hydrogen peroxide. And when that comes in contact with silver, there's immediate chemical reaction, spontaneous combustion, and the peroxide expands 800 times in volume, and it comes out as 1,800 degrees steam. So in this engine, the, the fuel would come in from up at the top on the left side, and the combustion chamber was packed full of pure silver screen. So imagine um, the screen on your screen door, but imagine those cut into discs and made out of pure silver. So the peroxide is pumped in, it hits the, pro it hits the uh, silver, boom, you got steam, you got thrust, and that's all she wrote. However, um, I could never buy 90% pure uh, peroxide. No one would sell it to me. So I was going to have to buy 50% pure and then put it through my own fractional distillation system to increase its uh, purity or strength to 90%. So this was my hydrogen peroxide uh, vacuum assist. Uh, fractional distillation system I built to make my rocket fuel. And basically, it's a still that boils 50% pure hydrogen peroxide. And actually, what it does is it boils off the water to increase the strength or the purity of the peroxide from 50% to 90%. So this is the labware. And you got the big pot on the right that you can't see right now is where the 50% peroxide goes. And then as the water boils off, it goes up that column you just saw. And the water goes over to this vessel. And the peroxide remains in the first vessel where it gets concentrated. So it uses a vacuum pump because... The greater the vacuum, the lower the boiling point um, of the water becomes. Or is it the? No, I can't remember. But anyway, there's the fifty. There's some of the fifty percent peroxide, and I built this building to keep everything in there. There's the vacuum pump, and yeah, that's the big tank, and there's the column that the uh, water travels up and goes over to the other vessel. So, But it was slow. I could only produce about a gallon and a half a day, so at, I needed 420 gallons, so you can imagine just how, how long it would have taken me. And then this is another animation showing what my proposed rocket flight was going to be like. Now, I had these fins because at real low speeds, like at launch, you need larger fin surfaces to remain stable. But as you got to higher speeds, the uh, large fins would become a detriment. So they would break away and reduce their size. And then the capsule would get up to its highest point, hopefully about 30 miles. And then the nose would pop off, and I would deploy something like a balut, which basically um, would allow it to fall in a stable fashion until I got low enough to be able to deploy a drogue chute. And then at a certain altitude, the drogue chute would come out 
and it or, or come off and it would deploy a ram air parachute for landing. Now the first capsule I built had fins on it, but I later decided to go to a finless design, and this was the form that I used to build the mold for the new rocket capsule. And in the background there, you can see one of my two uh, 200 plus gallon fuel tanks that were fiberglass and they were wrapped in um, Kevlar and carbon fiber cord. And I actually pressure tested these to 380 PSI and they held up and they only needed 300 PSI um, to propel the rocket. And then this was the, uh, the test rocket I was building that I planned to go 18,000 feet high and skydive from. And um, it was on this mobile launcher that I could drive to uh, the launch location and then raise it up and launch it. So, yeah, that, that was going to be my, my test, my skydiving rocket. And here now you can see it in the launch position. I actually built this um, uh, model rocket that was fully functional, and I, I managed to launch it up to 18,000 feet. Or, excuse me, up to 9,000 feet. So that was the uh, kind of the end of my project. Speakers, but... It's not scary here, at least on the surface. I've always kind of liked it up here. I've had family that live in the area.